sharpen their, to continue with the uh, mission here, sharpen their understanding and skills of, think of these words, critical thinking, reflection, analysis, communication, demonstrating knowledge of their major fields of study, experience genuine Christian community in a supportive environment which enables personal and spiritual growth, participating in opportunities for meaningful service, growing in their love of God and neighbor. All right, I have to get back to Mr. Lair here for a minute. Uh, it's very encouraging uh, to me to see a former student who has developed a deeply Christian worldview and has become a significant leader in his field. And as I look at you, that would be my hope for you. We at Eastern simply do not want to be satisfied with mediocrity. We want to pursue excellence together. All of us. So among other things, what that would mean would be, I want to encourage you to know the mission of the university. But coupled with the mission of the university, I want to encourage you to know your field well. To become an expert in your field. To be well read in your field. To be up to date in your field. To have a fire inside of you lit by the Holy Spirit. So that when you walk into a classroom, that fire, that passion for your field is communicated to your students. So that they, they know by hearing you, you love what you're doing. But they also know by hearing you, you know a lot about what you're doing. You've stayed abreast of your field. Perhaps you've written in your field. And that excellence, that pursuit of knowledge, that passion for truth is communicated to those that you're spending time with. And they then in turn communicate it to the, those other students that they sometime will, perhaps will encounter in a teaching situation or a modeling situation in business, in management, in nursing, wherever it may be. So uh, I would urge you to investigate, to continue and to investigate on a deep level the connection between your field and what I've just uh, talked about in terms of the mission of the university. Uh, I, w I would remain uh, deeply and will remain deeply dissatisfied with any of us if we fall into the pattern of thinking teaching at Eastern is simply like teaching anywhere else. He says, if, if we think that way, we've lost what? We've lost what we're about. And we can't lose what we're about. We have a responsibility before God. Every time we step into a classroom, a responsibility before God to communicate as clearly and as passionately and as deeply the field that we, in which we are engaged. And at some point, not always, but at some point as the semester goes on, to engage those students reflectively with this question. What does it mean from a Christian perspective to pursue this field? You can do it with accounting. You can do it in biology. It's easy in Christian studies. You can do it in mathematics, organizational leadership, business. My goodness gracious, just think of the ethical problems we're facing in business today. It's as though business leaders have lost their minds, at least in terms of how they're behaving ethically. We have much to offer at this point. So, pursue excellence. Ask yourself the question tonight. Take five minutes. Do this for me. Ask the question tonight. Number one, define the term. What is excellence? And secondly, how would, what would excellence look like as I teach? Uh, for us to coach, next point, stay healthy spiritually. Stay healthy spiritually. And if, if, if when I say stay healthy spiritually, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to teach at that place. There's so much talk about spiritual things. If that's what you're thinking, I'd rather you teach somewhere else. Stay healthy spiritually. Now we're all busy. I know it. I know you're busy. 
I really do. We're all busy. Uh, there's a text I want to leave you with. This is Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Luke's ch Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Uh, Luke loves to juxtapose things. He likes to put things side by side to catch our attention. It's surprising. And so in, in verse 15 of Luke chapter 5, Luke says that Jesus was constantly surrounded by sick people calling out to him. Calling out to him to, to be healed, to be delivered, to have their lives saved for, from whatever they were suffering from. Can you see them? Can you hear them? He's standing in the midst of people calling out, save me, help me. My life is in danger. He was a busy man with the most important work ever given to a human being. God incarnate in our midst, in the midst of these people. And the very next comment Luke makes in Luke chapter 5 verse 16 is this. And Jesus would often withdraw to lonely places and pray. And we say, how in the world did he do that? Well, he possessed a certain internal ruthlessness. He knew that if I am not spiritually healthy, everything else falls apart. Nothing fits. So let me ask you this question. How frenetic is your life? How busy are you? And one of the great dangers for all professors is the replacement of the important by the urgent. And then when that movement takes place, we become deeply dissatisfied with what we're doing. So how are you going to do it? The way to stay spiritually healthy is through the practice of the classical spiritual disciplines. Here they are. Prayer. Silence. Solitude. Simplicity. Service. Worship. I mean, the list could go on and on. My recommendation would be something as simple as this. Because we're all busy and we're all apt to lose our minds and get really too busy. If Jesus Christ himself found it necessary to withdraw into silence and solitude to pray, how much more we in our much more troubled condition? <coughs> To step into a classroom filled with 20, 30 students longing to learn, spending lots of money to learn, is a daunting task. It's a high vocation. So, we, so if I was to coach, I'd say the, the first step, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. Catch your breath. Say hello to God. Hang out a little bit. You don't have to say a lot. Listen. Become grounded. Become ever more deeply formed and shaped into the image of Christ. And that formation, part of our mission, will then communicate itself appropriately to our students.